the goal. It could be too far. No, he's thinking. Oh, what a catch! It puts a spicy forehand out in front of Naomi Morsilla. Woo for the win in Canada. Darren Woo! Santos with the layout grab. Oh, that fantastic grab. The claws of Chapa. Canada just became the world champions. Yo, Canada and the rest of the world, you're listening to the Hakane Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Theo Wan from Toronto, Ontario. And I'm Danny Proby, hailing from Vancouver, BC, and together we make your coast-to-coast guide to all things Canadian Ultimate. Speaking of Canadian Ultimate, I think that's always my segue, because we're always talking about Canadian Ultimate, because that's what we do. How was your weekend? Did you play any Frisbee? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I dwelled into some Frisbee on the weekend on Sunday. Maybe got a little color. I think I got sunburned a little bit. I'm feeling it right now as we're recording mm-hmm. on Sunday night. So uh, feeling a little bit in terms of, uh, you know, kind of after you play a day of Frisbee, especially in the sun, you kind of just feel drained of energy. So feeling that a little bit. But on Saturday, I got to cover uh, a football game for the university I work for now, which is the University of Toronto. So the Varsity Blues pulled out the victory. I don't expect any varsity blues football players to be watching this podcast but shout out to your team you won 11 10 i got to cover it which is cool take videos and post stories and things so that was really fun part of the new gig i got so that was happening on my weekend pretty hot over here in toronto i'm not sure if it was like that over in bc it was kind of wild weather actually like a mix of sun and rain and lightning so Things were a little crazy, but not much happened in terms of news from my end. For Elevate, we have a leadership program, and it was the first LIT session or leadership and training session today. And I think we have like over 20 people in our leadership program now, and they turn into coaches and they volunteer, and it's it's a really good time. So it was really cool to see all these like grade 9, 10, 11, 12s coming out because they want to learn how to coach. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't think You're there's much the else. Like, there's, Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the whole point. So it's a pretty boring weekend for me, but this episode is not going to be boring. So I think we should just head right to it, right to the news. We now have breaking news. All right, news time. Let's get it. University tournaments happening this coming week. Got some other news about it. Uh, for our people in Ontario and Quebec and, and, and Manitoba who's gone, this might be like old hat and, and news that you already know. But for teams out West that, you know, I don't want to spoil all your news there, Danny, but for teams out West, this might be something of interest. So uh, we're just talking to our resident fact checker, Andrew Bachelor, about it. And just to be clear, if you want to attend the University Nationals, you can attend a regional qualifying event. And if you win that event, boom, you're going to the Division One. That's the best eight teams. If that doesn't happen or you can't go or something happens, you can go to the Friday qualifier, which is like kind of a playing tournament. And so if you, sometimes it's like two bids, it depends. But let's say, I think in 2019 it was two bids, two different games to go kind of thing. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Um, but there was like a game to go. And basically if you win, you go to division one, which is the top eight teams that qualified either through the regional qualifiers or the Friday qualifier, and then if not, you go to Division Two, which is everyone. So B teams will go, teams that choose not to go to Division One. So that's kind of the news with that. Um, some teams they don't want to go Division One because maybe they have younger players and they just want to play in Division Two. But if, uh, yeah, th- those are kind of the options there. Like I said, Ontario, that's old hat. Most teams know this, but kind of give out the news anyways about that, just to make sure people know. Yeah, for the BC teams, like when I played. We would sometimes go to, we call them Westerns. So C, U, W, U, C, U, C, letters. We would go because it was a fall tournament, but we just play UBC, like UBC's X team and Y team, and then like our X team. Or sometimes you'd play like a random, like UBC alum team or something, and we'd pay money and we'd just play scrimmage against the local team and it didn't really like mean much to us the one year we did go was because nationals was in Kelowna but they just I guess recognize there's so many more college teams that play in the Canadian series back east that it didn't make sense to host it this far west 
which is fair. But this year, because of all of the cancellations and Ultimate and USA Ultimate, the teams UBC and UVic were maybe going to be playing in the fall in the US to compete at the kind of weird nationals. I don't think that's happening anymore. So let's just say they're C-U-U-C curious. So you might actually see some West representation at that tournament, which would be really exciting. What do you think about that? I'm going to be honest with you. There's been UBC teams from the past that I've seen that I was like, if they came to the eastern part of Canada, would they just crush all the teams because they get all this competition? Or maybe some of these top Canadian teams out east would take them down. We will never know the answer to that question because it never happened. But this year, it could be the year. UBC, UVic, if you're listening, we want you to come. Come to Brampton, Ontario. It's not that far from Toronto. You can go visit the sites after. Go to the CN Tower. You can catch a Maple Leafs game. You can do all that. But come to University of Nats. That would be pretty exciting. I'm honestly fired up. I've heard some rumblings about it too from some people like the Ontario captains and coaches were like, oh, UBC might be coming. UBC might be coming. So there's a, a little bit of excitement there, Danny. I'm just saying. As, as they should be excited because, again, as I said, when they were in Kelowna, which is in BC, the finals on the women's side at least was UBC UVic. So I might be a bit BC biased, but we had to take out Manitoba and Queens along the way. So just saying. Yeah, BC Manitoba teams, should go be give them West, money. I think, too, right, Danny? Like, I know. I mean, they are, but they don't play in the American College Series. So yeah, they're a little bit of an outlier. Is. I want them to. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, moving on to other West news. Ty Barbieri, Jonah Liash are not making the trip to UCI. And if you know anything about them, you know that they're steady, steady people that are on their O-line. They're really, really important. I think Ty even won the toaster or whatever last time. He did, 2019. That is correct. So that's a big hit for that team. Um, I think that they were planning on not going anyway. Ty ended up getting quite injured recently, but there's going to be a big shift. Their O-line, it's going to be exciting. Maybe some new people are going to get a crack at seeing the field and the cutting position on O-line. So we'll see what they bring to the table at that tournament. Um, Speaking of Vancouver club teams, traffic is the team that's going to USA competition this year. So, Guinea this pigs. weekend was sectionals. Sorry? I said guinea pigs. As Sure. Well, guinea pigs, whatever you want to call us. I think it's it's going to be very exciting. So, oh, I'm excited. Instead of going to sectionals, we got to pass all the way to regionals, which is nice. But sectionals happened this weekend. And so there's some weird scores that were kind of coming through where riots normally top, top. They're usually in the top three of all of the U.S. And then undergrounds and traffic. It's usually traffic and then underground. Um, in the section it's kind of how it f- usually finishes or sometimes traffic will beat riot it's like pretty close up at the top there but it seemed like riot and underground's rosters were just decimated and they ended up having a game where i think underground scored five or six in a row to beat riot on game point or something like that so mm-hmm. i have no idea what to expect of the seattle teams next weekend we also are going to be throwing schwa into the mix so it's going to be a good time i have no idea what to expect from these teams i'm just hoping that we like practices that we've been having and the scrimmages we've had against basically our own team and against a couple mixed teams were enough to give us enough reps to be able to take down some of these Seattle slash Oregon teams. So we will see. I mean, Danny, that's a lot to to dissect out of uh, your Western news. So first off, a lot of the injury updates. We updated before about an injury to Captain Jordan Marin of the Sixers even though Sixers already has a bid, but it's still a big hit for them at UCI. So I love the injury updates. If you got injury updates for your team, maybe you don't want to share it out loud, but that is big news for Furious. Um, obviously, they're Wait, still to be, be clear, you Theo, know, you don't love injuries. You just love updates. Sorry, love the updates. Wow. Do not People, love the injuries. Make sure you get don't on those ankle sprains. That. Yeah, don't okay. want that. But love the... Ro- okay, I should... Let me retract. I should say roster updates. We love the roster updates. That's what we like. Don't love the injuries. Long day, I told you, Danny. No. So yeah. love the roster updates. And in terms of what you're saying about uh, traffic and, and playing, first of all, best of luck. Uh, we wish you obviously safe travels to and from 
uh, from the Hockey Night audience and the, the co-host Theo Wan here. Wish you safe travels <laughs> there and back and all the, the testing and things that you have to go through. Um, and yeah, you bring up a good point of, and I think this is going to apply to our UCI preview as well, where some teams have not been playing that many other teams. Like that's just a reality based on location or whatever. And so will they be ready for the increased competition? That's a question we're going to have for for your team and also for all these teams coming up, especially I think in the master's division specifically where there's usually less teams and less tournaments in general, and especially this year, are they scrimmaging against other teams? I don't know. So that's uh, something to look out for. But uh, in terms of the East, I know this is near and dear to your heart, but we don't have too much news about it, but we do know that prospect camps happened in Ontario and Quebec. And from my knowledge, Alex Lamb from BC flew and like was kind of part of the happenings in Ontario and Quebec, which is pretty cool. And so was Willem, the open coaches. The women's head coach is also there. Nice. So seeing yeah. talent on the east side. Is there a are there any other prospect camps coming up or are we uh done with them or is there like an East Coast one kind of thing or No, that's it. It's the four usually that happen and yeah, it was sunny weather. Look like there's lots of athletes out in the Ontario one. I didn't see anything from the Quebec side just yet. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see everybody at tryouts. So it's just so fun. I love Frisbee. Frisbee fun right there. I know, I know. And teams are ramping up from what I hear. Scrimmages are happening. We're not going to report on all the scrimmages now. I know we did for like a weekend thing that happened. But teams are, are getting together with other teams and just playing. And I think that's like kind of basically all you can do right now with UCI this that close. But uh, yeah, we'll be re- previewing UCI senior and university Nats after the, not university Nats, university regional qualifiers after the break. We'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by Be Ultimate Apparel. Based out of Vancouver, BC, Be Ultimate is climate neutral certified and designs products that are built to perform. I personally love my two Be Ultimate sun hoodies and I rock them wherever I go. If you want to learn more about Be Ultimate, start your custom team order, or check out any of their ready for purchase collection, you can head over to beultimate.ca. Hey, c'est Phil Dorval, directeur technique pour Ultimate Québec, et vous écoutez le Hocking Hey Podcast, votre guide pour l'Ultimate Canadien d'un océan à l'autre. Welcome everybody to our UCI Masters Preview. I wish that you could have been a fly on the wall to see Theo and I stressing about our picks. It is so challenging in a normal year to make picks based on what you're seeing on rosters and past performances. But in a year where we haven't seen a lot of these people play and a lot of these teams have been completely decimated, we're still having to use whatever little nuggets of information we have to make bets to try to get at least shame coming at us from the public audience. But I'm feeling pretty confident about my picks. How are you feeling, Theo? I feel like some of our picks are going to be similar, maybe picking some of the faves, but you know, some upsets are going to be picked as well. And uh, as yes. we say, if we don't pick your team, use that as fuel. If we pick your team, get pumped up, but don't, don't get too pumped up because you got to like stay level headed and don't get too high up that Danny and I both picked your team because then what if you lose? Like people will laugh at you. So don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Cause we don't want to be wrong either. So this is our call out for you. Now, we're going to start in the mixed masters division. Lots of teams, teams that I had never heard of before this tournament, teams that I ha- know quite a bit of, about about their players, so some teams from BC. I struggled because I was like, oh, well, I think all these players are great from BC, but I don't want to have a BC bias. And so it'll be kind of reflected in my choices where I'm kind of using my intuition. So in pool A, the seeding happened, well, I guess before we even dive into the pools, there was a live draw that was really exciting, actually. Andrew Batchelor, who we mentioned now thousands of times on the podcast, he's our resident fact checker and also the tournament director for UCI, our competition director. And he did something really cool, which was like a live draw because because they don't have a lot of data on all these teams. They kind of put teams in pots. They're called pots, right, Theo? Right. Yeah, they put them so in pots based, based on like strength, yeah. Yeah, so then because it was hard to actually seed within that group, so say GOAT versus Furious, it's hard to know. They just 
randomly drew them. And another note is that they were really focusing on geographic diversity, which I think is great because it sucks to fly all the way across the country to play the same teams that you were scrimmaging in your backyard. So I love all the effort. Also, special, special shout out. We are using a spreadsheet that Andrew Bachelor made, and he said it's taken him more than 10 hours, up towards 13 hours to put together this spreadsheet. It is a, it's a work of art, I must say. It's a work of art. I know Theo's pretty excited about it. He's the one that pulled the trigger and asked Batch if we could use, use this fancy spreadsheet. So thank you to you as well. I mean, if you like formulas and you like Excel spreadsheets, then you need to talk to Andrew Bachelor because this spreadsheet, you see it on, so when you see the schedules for any tournament with Ultimate Canada, you see these like Google Sheets and you're like, oh, like it's so helpful. But someone had to put that together and formulize it to make sure that like, whoever wins this pool they go there and like that's all calculated by the computer but it's done by someone to get it there and that person andrew bachelor we've been shouting you out all episode but man that just hearing all the the hours it took for you to do that like come on give the man some love some praise for that because you need that schedule to know where you're going and he's helping you get there so come on yeah come on speaking of schedule we're gonna start mixed masters as i said so in pool a so again, these seeds are kind of based on strength in general, but then also a bit of random draw. So they're not necessarily as accurate as we'll find out that they were at the end of the tournament, as per normal. So A1, we have Notorious KWG. A2, Reunion. A3, you say BOD or BOD? Yeah, BOD. BOD, BOD Bank cool. of Dad. I don't think that's what it stands for, but that's what I always think of Bank BOD's Bank of Dad, but... Bank of Danny. Got it. Uh, A4, Forever Young. And A5, Magma Rock. So that is your Pool A. So, Theo, what's happening in Pool B? It's a little bit of a girthier pool. Yeah, so the way it's set up, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up the spreadsheet. So on the YouTube, I'm, I'm kind of looking somewhere. I'm looking at my other screen and uh, yeah, giving you some insight. So yeah, there's like two We're going to be doing that a lot this episode. B. Yeah, for sure. Is it? So there's two pools in Pool B. So there's C1, C2, C3. So that's Happy Campers, Dinner at Four. Love the name. Uh, Firefly. And I guess, should we say where they're from? Just maybe, we'll do that when we do our pick. We'll do our picks that way. Like, we'll just keep it going. Uh, D1, Epoch, Max Power, and Pushing Daisies rounds out your pool. D, that's like in pool B. So let's start. We're going to do, with the spreadsheet, we're able to like, actually calculate each game and then figure out like who's going to go where. So we're going to do that kind of for the pools heading into the bracket for the bracket. We're just going to go to the finals and maybe like third. We won't kind of, we've placed it out on our own sheets, but we won't like, you know, announce all that. So Danny, I'll give you the honors. You get to first announce. Come on, let's go. Pool A, you're going to announce like who is like, you know, A1, A2, A3, A4, like who comes and finishes in that, in the, in that order. And then I'll break down mine, and then we'll kind of talk about the key games to watch out for in that matchup. Oh, this is fun. Let's go. Okay, so I have Reunion winning Pool A. Okay, and then I have Notorious KWG finishing second, and then BOD finishing third in that pool. So it's kind of hard not to follow along with the way the teams are kind of potted or seeded initially because there's already been a bit of research that has gone into it, but there's been some, some games that I, I think would be a little bit of a, a spicy pick. So I have like reunion beating notorious KWG, which I think is maybe going to be the closest game. So I think that's my, my game to watch if we can call it that. Yeah. And, uh, Danny, we were talking about this earlier that, you know, people, when they look at the pools, they like to hear, like, the, the pool of death kind of thing. I don't know. Like, it's just a yeah. concept in sports. And, like, I think pool this A is, is pool of death. You got uh, two strong Ontario teams in uh, KWG, who finished third in 2019. Uh, Masters reunion um, out of Ontario as well. And then BOD from Vancouver, or sorry, Vancouver, Montreal or Quebec. And then Forever Young from Vancouver. Yeah, they're so, strong too. It's so hard. That, that's what I mean. So I think, yeah, of course, this pool is probably the trickiest one to figure out. To be honest, Mixed Masters was pretty tricky for us to pick. I'm not going to lie to the audience here. But I'm going to announce my pick. So I'm going to go 
KWG first. I know they're, I know that's kind of chalk, but I got some non chalk coming for you. So I'm going to go BOD is going to come second. Reunion third. Forever well, Young fourth. And Magma Rock fifth. So I am picking a BOD. I don't want to say upset. They're just going to beat Reunion. I heard they have some pretty strong players from uh, Montreal's past teams like Ensom, and, and some played for Lab as well in 2019. So I'm going to go with the BOD upset, and they're going to finish second in the pool. So let's move on to Pool B here. Danny, you're up. All right, I have winning the pool, Epoch, coming second place, Happy Campers, followed by Dinner at Four, Max Power, Firefly and then pushing daisies. So I don't know if I had anything too crazy happening in this pool. I think I had every game kind of going to seed just based on what I know from these rosters. I think dinner at four max power, there could be some kind of flipping, flipping in there potentially that I could be wrong about, but I feel pretty good about what I got. Yeah, it was kind of similar, but I, I'm a little bit more higher up on dinner at four mainly because I think I played a bu- against a bunch of them. And I know that like, Durham has been pretty successful in the past and mixed with uh, a team like Backdraft. So I actually went Epoch from Quebec, Dinner at Four, Happy Campers, Victoria, British Columbia Zone, Max Power, then Pushing Daisies, and Firefly. So Firefly being a Winnipeg representative, pretty cool. And we love that uh, geographic diversity. But unfortunately, I have them finishing last. So this pool especially, it looks kind of weird on the spreadsheet because they kind of filter into different matchups. So we're not going to go into all that, but that's kind of our picks for the pools. And now, bracket time. (sighs) This is hard. (laughs) So, I mean, you can't count out Happy Campers because they did win Nationals just a couple years ago. But I know not all of these Eastern teams are there. So again, with very limited information... I went number one, Epoch, number two, Reunion, number three, Happy Campers. And I know that you don't have the same thing, and I think that's great. Yeah, before we even get to your, uh, like, semis, I want to know, like, you have, there's two playing games that happen into the semis. So, who do you, I'm just taking a look at your, we have access to each other's spreadsheets, so we do get to see that. Uh, so you have happy, happy campers. campers versus BOD and then notorious KWG versus dinner at four. And I have happy campers coming out of that to face reunion, notorious KWG to fa- face epoch and then an epoch Ooh. reunion final. All right. So I do not have that same bracket. Let's go. So Great. I have reunion taking on dinner at four in the playing game. Reunion wins. I have BOD taking on happy campers. BOD. Hopefully you're gonna prove me right here, BOD. I got you going all the way to semis. Let's go. Epoch's gonna take on their Quebec comrades in BOD and win. KWG, they're gonna prove their might in the Masters game. A lot of them playing for Crash, who made world clubs all the way back in 2018. And have Epoch I actually wrote out the score. 13-12. I'm gonna call it 13-12. Close game. And then I have Reunion taking third. So that is our mixed bracket. Mixed was pretty hard to pick, but I'm kind of happy with what I chose. And uh, Danny, you know, at the end of UCI Masters, we're going to have to compare, uh, you know, who got the more picks right. You know, that's going to happen. Something has to be on the line. We'll figure out what it is. Oh, gosh. No, there's got to be like a public bet. Oh, no. Public shame. Yeah. Oh, we'll figure it out. Something that offline. Okay. Let's, let's move to open next. I struggled with this one more because I don't I don't know much about the Masters Open scene. I, I know a lot more about mixed Masters and then the women, of course, because I played in both those divisions. So this was a really fun one for me to research, to like look at all the rosters and see which names I recognized and kind of trying to like, yeah, use what little information I had. So do you want to do you want to start first with how your pools ended up? Yeah, I'll start first. That's fine. Uh, pool N, uh, for those keeping track at home, has uh, Still out of Ontario, Ensom out of Montreal or, or Quebec, Carbon out of Alberta, and Viper out of Kitchener-Waterloo, Ontario. 
And so we'll we'll do that pool first. I don't have it going to chalk here. I have still Carbon, Ensom, and Viper. I like the Carbon roster, especially because they have some AFC players that are Masters eligible that are playing on this team. I know Ensom's pretty good too, but I have that close matchup going to Carbon. What is your pool? I don't know why it's not pool A, but anyways, pool N. What does your pool N look like? I think the reason is because every pool in every division has an, a unique letter. So you're not going to have the same letter coming from women's masters into men's masters or open masters. So um, I think there is one master spreadsheet that has everything, I'm sure, in uh, Batch's beautiful mind. Um, I have Hopefully it going it to seed. So I have still Ensom, Carbon, and Viper. So I know that the Carbon Ensom game is going to be the one to watch in this pool. Um, hopefully I'm right. I do have some some folks on that Carbon roster that I know and love. So sorry. <laughs> oh, they're they're not going to like you in the the YouTube comments or you know Twitter it's or whatever. It's, it's fine. fine. But uh, no, you're right. The the unique pool names actually totally make sense. Batch, you don't. You know I got corrected right on the. The podcast here by Danny, so don't need to correct me there in the comments is all I'm Back saying. Checker. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I know he likes those nuggets too. It's like an Easter egg for those listening to the podcast. Uh Pool B, or sorry, Pool P. Uh Tombstone, Legend Team out of Toronto, Ontario. Dead Circus, love the name. Halifax Zone. Quacks out of Quebec. And then Nationals, hometown, Ottawa. Can they pull it off? So I have Tombstone, Dead Circus, the Nationals getting a win over the Quacks, and that's what I have. Pool P. I am going to get so much shade for my picks. I know it. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. So, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you know what? I hope that whoever's listening from these teams are really motivated by my picks. I got Tombstone, number one. Hard to pick anybody but them. And I have Quacks, then Dead Circus, then National. So I think that that might have been a spicy order. And I might get some flack for that, but I'm going to stick to it. You know? I feel you got to stick to the picks. Qu- quacks or Quack? I'm looking. It says Quack on their roster. Maybe quack. it actually is Quacks, but uh, on the spreadsheet, it's Quacks. So either way, hopefully we said the name right. But hey, we, we're separating the picks here. You know, I picked them fourth, you picked them second. So one of us is going to be right, I guess, and one of us is going to be wrong. So I do like and that. And which one out of the two of us do you think has more master's men's knowledge? Clearly me. So Yeah, clearly. So, <laughs> okay, quarterfinal time. So, Danny, our quarterfinals are going to be different based on obviously how we seeded it. So I'm just going to go off my quarterfinals based on how I seeded and, and said how things would go. So first quarterfinal, still walking through into the semifinals against Quacks. Dead Circus Ensom, if that actually happens, that's going to be like a really cool um, quarterfinal that I think is like going to be really contested. And I have Ensom picking up the victory. I know I had... Nope, they were in different pools. So yeah, I have Ensom picking up the victory. Tombstone beating up Viper. Sorry to the KW people that might be listening because I played out of that region. And Carbon takes on the Nationals. And they win. So this is where it gets spicy. Semifinals, okay? Still, Ensom still wins. They're still chugging along like that. Tombstone nice. beats Carbon barely. And then, I don't know if this is spicy. I'm picking Tombstone to get a bid. They're a Grandmasters team from my knowledge, except for a couple of players. A lot of them are Grandmasters player, players that play GOAT back in the day. John Hassel, everyone knows that name. Come on. John Hassel, Sean Chu is on this team. Who else we got? Kirk Nyland, Hugh Brewster, Andy Collins. You know who Andy Collins is, Danny. Andrew Octorlin yeah. is on that team. Come on. Toli Vasiliev is on this team. Dang, Tombstone is stacked. I would actually be interested to see. This is an ad lib here, Danny. But I want to see what Tombstone would do in the actual just open division. Like, I'm convinced that they do actually pretty well. I know some of them, you know, they're up in age, but you can't knock down the championship pedigree of these players. Come on. (laughs) I'm fired up about that pick. You seem fired up. Is that so you have Tombstone winning the whole thing? What do you got? 
Okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, did I not say that? Yeah. Tombstone winning the whole thing. Uh, Carbon's going to uh, beat still for, I guess it would have been the second place game. So that is something to note for the audience that if still wins the whole thing, then the loser of that final against still would play the winner of the third place game to get a bid. That's if still wins the whole thing, just so people mm-hmm. know. All right, so for my quarterfinals, I have still taking over Nationals. I have Carbon taking over Quack or Quacks. I have Toonstone taking over Viper, and I have Ensom taking over Dead Circus. So similar teams making it through to you, just in a different way, which isn't a surprise, I think. Um, so I have Still versus Carbon as one semifinal. I have Carbon making it through. Tombstone versus Ensom. Tombstone making it through, and I have Tombstone winning the whole thing. And then we have Still versus Ensom for a play on game. And I have Still making it through, playing against Carbon and taking over Carbon in the last play in game. Yeah, Bash, you might have to, you know, let us know if that game would even be played. Uh, because I, I think since Still already got a bid, I, I don't think they would even play a play in game at that point. But maybe they, they no. play an actual game. I don't know. But uh, yeah, the spicy pick. Carbon. I don't know. Finals. I like the, I like those players. Uh, I like those like... players. So the thing with the picks is you got to pick with the head, but sometimes the heart gets in the way. So we'll see what happens. I'm not saying Danny's picks are, are wrong at all, but one of <laughs> us is going to be right and one of us is going to be wrong. I said this already. I sound like a broken record. It's going to happen again. So let's go. We're now moving on to women's. Danny, I'm going to be honest with you. This is the hardest division for me for obvious reasons, seeing as I've never played in the women's master's division. Um, but I would say it's hard also because of the format. It's nine teams. So kudos to the competition committee and, you know, the schedule maker for, for getting this together. Because once you look at the schedule, you're like, wow, like there is opportunity for multiple games on Saturday. And it's not just two pool play games. Like there's a lot of mixing around. And that's pretty cool because some of these teams are traveling from far away all the way from Alberta there. So one of the teams at least. So Yeah. Do you want so to the pool starting off, and, and kind of your picks? Yeah. So in pool F, we have Stello coming in at F1. We have Ag- Ag- Aguada. Got it. And Nebula finishing out third at that pool. So pool G, we have Macrame, Queen's P, and Solstice. And then Pool H, we have Berta, Sakosh, and Vintage in that order. Nice. <sighs> I, don't, I, I guess I'll go first. Um, I went True to Seed for the first Pool F. I went Stello, Aguada, and Nebula. I have a feeling you might have as well. Yeah, Stella O. Oh. Strong looking oh, roster. Who's going to beat that roster? I'm just... Okay, before we even go to our finals picks, I'm just saying I would also like to see... See, I could say I would like to see this team compete with women's in the women's division, but a lot of the players do still compete in the women's division. So that is actually a possibility. But the legend and Mercier on the squad, new last name, but same player. So watch out, women's master's division. That's all I got to say. So, so you yes, do have I the had picks pool for pool F, F. One of the same. Yeah, I had it, I had it the same there. Stella O, Aguada. I believe they're out of Gatineau, Quebec. They're Aguada. And then Nebula out of Ontario. There's like three women's master teams from Ottawa this year. Solstice, Nebula, and Stella O. So that's pretty cool. Obviously hometown. They're going to be able to get more players involved. But love to see even just continued ultimate for players of that uh, yeah demographic. That's just cool stuff. Cool stuff. So... Uh, pool G, what do you got? I kept to see here too, based on rosters and everything that I was learning. So I got Macrame, then Queen's P, then Solstice, finishing out my pool. How about you? For me, it's the same. Queen's P, I'm I'm really interested to see what they do because I'm I was looking at their roster, um, and I don't know, Danny, if you recognize them because they're more like Ontario players, but they look like a team that. I've seen like kind of play around the scene and 
southern Ontario. So they could do some potential damage. Maybe kind of like the fourth team there that um, people should be watching out for. So I do have, uh, yeah, this the it going to chalk as they say. So macrame, queens bee, and then solstice. So pool H, anything spicy there, or are we going chalk again? Yeah, I'm sorry, everyone listening at home. Berta, Sakosh, vintage in that order on my list. Yeah, and something to note, because when you hear the name Vintage, I know we had asked about, like, we were just even asking each other, Danny, about, like, that name, because we've heard that name before. They've done well. But, uh, yeah, we know that, uh, just based on looking at their roster, that it's not necessarily the same team. And, obviously, teams will change with personnel and uh, from years past. And so, it's easy to attach, you know, tradition to a team name, but we also got to look at the rosters. So, I also went to chalk there, Berta, Sakosh, and Vintage. You've played with some of these Berta players, is that correct? Or at least against them in tournaments? So you kind of know what, what they're bringing to the table here. Yeah, it's a lot of wild players. So I've, I've definitely played against them with some familiar names. Um, I think they could do quite well. They're usually quite tall coming out of Alberta. So it's like quite favorable, especially if it's going to be windy. Seem to do quite well. So it'll be exciting to see what that, that roster has to offer. Yeah, I'm I'm ready to, to see it. I know you won't be there, Danny, but I'm going to try to make an appearance at the Masters National, especially if there's a live streaming happening, which we're still, at the time of this recording, trying to figure out. At least that's what they are, they told me. So uh, this is where it gets confusing now, okay? Audience at home, you kind of follow along the spreadsheet. I don't think you have access to it. Maybe you do. But uh, this is where it gets complicated, Danny, because then it gets shifted into some reseeds, and we have Pool I which is the top three seeds from each pool. So based on what we said, it's Stella O, Macrame, and Berta. So I'm going to tell you what I had, which is Stella O, Berta, then Macrame. So I'm I'm predicting Berta is going to get the win over Macrame and finish second in pool L. Do you have that or you, you got something different? Pool L, Stella, Berta, and then Macrame. That's how I have it. All right, see, bing, bam, boom, yeah. same thing. Now Let's just keep motoring. J, like so I pool, said, it gets pool, confusing. Pool J, Sakosh, Nebula, then Solstice. Wait, man, you're copying my. Am I on the wrong spreadsheet? No, I'm on my own. You're on. We just got the same picks. Come on, keep going. Pool K. Oh no, I was on your spreadsheet. Pool G, I have Queens P, Macrame, Solstice. There we go. Pool H, I have Berta, Sakosh, and Vintage. So I did make a mistake there. No, no, you already said those ones. You already said those ones. We're moving on to the pools yeah. after that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Pool L, did you... Pool L, did you... Is it L? Yeah, I guess L. Did you have Stella O, uh, Berta, and Macrame, or no? And Queen's P. Oh, as like the four? Pool L, I have Stella, Berta, and Queen's P. Oh, you know why, folks? Danny picked Queen's P to beat Macrame in the pool. My internet must have bugged out when that happened because I didn't hear that. So now I see what you're saying. Okay, we got things figured out here. So Pool L, you've 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 got you've announced that pick. And so what about Pool J? I have Sakosh, Nebula, and Solstice in that order. Ditto. Copy that. And okay, pool K. Okay. Macrame, Aguada, Vintage. Yeah, that's where we differ because of that pool matchup that you said earlier. So now, into the bracket. What do we got? Okay, I have kind of like a pre pre semis, would it be? Yeah, it's like a it's, it's kind like of a, it's like a play in it's, it's a like play a four in. five. Okay. Yeah, four or five are kind of playing each other, and the other the three that were in pool L, the top three are get a bye to the semi. So that's how the schedule makers did that. And so who do you have in the playing game? I have Sakosh versus Macrame and I have Macrame making it through. I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep going. And then I have, so in the semifinal, it'll be Stello versus Macrame. I have Stello winning. Then I have Berta and Queens P in the other semifinal. I have Berta winning. So I have Stello versus Berta final 
and I have it finishing Stello, Britta, Macrame in that order for second, third. All right. For me, Queen's P, they beat Sakosh. And then it's Stella O winning against Queen's P from the pre-quarter game. Berta beating Macrame. And Stella O, oh so good, got the championship. That's what we <laughs> predicted. And so that's our picks. <sighs> Danny, we got through it. Whew. We got through it. Yeah. If it seemed like we were confused or we didn't know where we were looking, it's because, as we said at the top of the episode, it's like – the most insane puzzle that we're trying to like parse out there's pools are shifting. Like if you could see the spreadsheets we're working off of, it's amazing. It's truly incredible. Apologize for any kind of like hiccups I had along the way, but my picks are my picks and I stand by them. I'm confident. Okay. Just, just for the audience, we're just going to recap the final picks. That's it. We're going to recap open. Oh, so we'll start with mixed. Danny picks epoch to beat reunion in the final. I pick Epoch to beat Notorious, Notorious KWG in the final. In open, Denny picks Tombstone over Carbon. I pick Tombstone over Still. And in women's, we have the same final, Stello over Berta. Those are our picks. That's it. Preview is done. That was a long one. That was really challenging. And if you're listening at home and you're going to this tournament and you're like, how did they do it? You're welcome. We gave it our best effort. And if you're offended by us, I'm sorry. My most Canadian. Danny, you're apologizing accent. too much. We got to just go with the picks. That's what I think. We just got to go. I'm confident. With the picks. I'm confident. Well, if you are listening to this and you think our picks are too spicy, you can slide into our DMs and let us know. We'll give you a special shout out on the stories. Maybe we'll do some engagement to see what teams you think are going to be winning in each of the divisions this weekend. Good luck to all the athletes out there. That was, that was, that was meaty. Theo, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good because uh, later on, we got to do some university preview as well. So this episode is just going to have a lot of preview content. And that's good stuff. But we're going to take a quick break and be right back here on the Huckin' A podcast. Welcome back, Huckin' A podcast. I'm here flying solo right now for the university preview. Got a lot of tournaments coming up. So super excited about that. Going to break it all down. Some tournaments going to have less teams than others, so at the time of this recording, the schedules are not out yet, so uh, by the time you watch this podcast, the schedule should be out, so you might be able to get a better lay of the land, but preview a couple teams from each tournament and kind of my picks for who's going to make the final and uh, who's going to win. So we'll start out west um, in the Pacific, uh, CPUC, not a lot of teams registered, so I see UBC, men and women's, and uvic so um yeah i don't know what's going to happen there at least at the time of this recording but ubc is looking good and we talked about it earlier that if they go out to cuc this year it'll be really exciting so i'm excited to see that and, and moving on here into the prairies really excited for manitoba's team um uh, with the addition of quinn snyder and just an already stacked team that they had in 2019 that won uh clearly they're revamped and ready to go so Winnipeg, excuse me, Manitoba, ready to do some damage. Let's get it. I know Regina made it to CUC Division Two, so good to see some geographic representation. I know the tournaments tend to be on the East Coast there, so teams coming out from the middle of Canada going out to play some University Ultimate, so do like to see that. But the main tournament's happening this weekend. I'm going to kind of skip over the Atlantic as well. doesn't seem like much is going on there um, in terms of uh, – what I what I would predict is D cut because they're classic program Dalhousie, so maybe another team will kind of upset there. But uh, we'll focus here on Ontario and Quebec specifically, and uh, start off with Steel Town, which is a big tournament that happens in Hamilton, Ontario. For those that don't know, and so uh, Open Division got the usual suspects of teams that aren't this year with the Eastern Ontario qualifier. Uh, there's some teams that aren't going that are a little bit east, so like Queens and Carleton. We'll talk about them in the next tournament there so it's wide open teams if you win this you get a bid to CUUC division one we talked about earlier in the news about how that works and so uh, Masters going York Rams ultimate Trent 
U of T, Guelph, Waterloo, Western, lots of teams going here. So I'm specifically talking about the Open to start. And so in the Open division, my pick is going to be Waterloo Warriors. People might say, oh, Theo, you know a lot of people on that team. I do. I will admit I do know a lot of people on that team. But that team has been Division One multiple times in the last few years. And they bring a lot of their players back, including uh, Scott Graham, who hopefully you're healthy there, Scott. And uh, I know you played with Furious and some of these guys uh, played with Grand Trunk this summer. And so I, I think they're retooled, ready to go. Some of them playing Hound as well. So they've got that club experience. They are have that camaraderie, that chemistry. So especially early season, I'm going to pick Waterloo to win. And it's going to be tough who they're going to defeat there in the final. I'm going to go with the tried and true of the University of Toronto. So Toronto's got its own uh, star power there. People who played club for GT and Hound, for example. So I'm expecting U of T to be in the final. But I'm picking Waterloo to top them in the the open division in the women's division. It's a little bit of a, the reverse, I would say. So uh, I've seen the U of T roster and I'm pretty stoked about it. You got the Dos Santos sisters, Sarah Mars on that team, Jade, who just played with the Sixers. So there's a lot going on with that Toronto team. A couple of them who've played for toxics in the past and they just have some of that experience. So, their top end is going to be really good, and I think that's going to carry them, especially in the university series where, um, yes, you need some depth, but in those windy games and things like that, you usually have your top end carry you to victory. So U of T, I'm going to pick to win, and they're going to take out, so the reverse of what I said for open, they're going to take out Waterloo, who I like as well. Uh, a few club players on that team, and um, they've also been rising um, as well in the past few years. So Toronto mm-hmm. defeating Waterloo, that, those are my picks. So to recap, Open, Waterloo defeats Toronto. In women's, Toronto defeats Waterloo. So there we go. Uh, We're going to go Eastern Ontario qualifiers. Open, this is tough. You got Carleton, Queens, Ottawa. All of them, you could argue, can make it. I'm looking at the Queens roster right now, at least at the time of this recording. Seeing they might be missing some of their star power that uh, they normally might have. So I know Wilk, S.E. Wilkie, Lewis, Eli Park on that roster, a couple of players who played for the Rush this past summer. But I'm going to go with Carlton, who has a little bit more of uh, some chemistry of guys that have played together, playing in the Ottawa system together. Um, Brendan Addy Bay, who just had a breakout season, the AUDL. Jeremy Hill's their coach. Uh, they're bringing a lot of people back. And so Carlton, I'm picking you, open team, to defeat Queens in the final Maybe you'll prove me right. We'll see. We'll find out this weekend. And women's side, as of right now, I see three teams registered. And uh, so Carlton, Queens, and U Ottawa again. This one's tough, but I'm going to pick Queens. They've been very successful. Came second in 2019. So I'm picking Queens women's to win over, I'm going to say Carlton. So Carlton women's. Queens over Carlton women's. And then in the open, Carlton over Queens. So a little reverse ado here. And uh, moving on now into Quebec. And uh, this this is very exciting, actually, because there's a few uh, different programs being represented in, in McGill, Montreal, Laval, Sherbrooke. They're all there in the women's. And so I'm going to pick a team that I actually commentated in 2019, and that's McGill Women's. So I'm going to pick McGill Women's to win. I'm looking at the Laval roster, and I'm seeing some players I recognize from that year, but uh, like Malte, for example. Um, but I don't recognize all the roster, and maybe that's just my uh, non-understanding of that scene. So I'm going to pick McGill to beat Laval in the final. Maybe that's a spicy pick in the women's division. And in the open, there are some good teams. I see this McGill team. They were made Division One in 2019, and they have a lot of those players back with Hayden Stone. Uh, I see Jack Doherty Eagles out there as well, two captains now. Um, Thomas McClear is our coach. So... And also John Hayduke. John Hayduke coached McGill as well. So they got that pedigree of experience. But I'm looking at some of these other rosters. And I see U Montreal's roster filled with a couple Mephisto Royale players in Malik Oje Samar, Rafael Salves, Thomas Lalon Landry, Yuan Cojoner. Zachary Massey has played for Mesa, I believe. No, uh, Manic, Manic. He's playing for Manic. I'm just remembering. 
So they have a, they have that sort of like top end talent that I think can compete with McGill. So I'm going to pick a little upset special again. I'm going to maybe it's not an upset, but Montreal Caravan. I don't know if that's what they're actually called, but that's what their college team is called. So the Caravan Montreal taking down McGill in the open division and women's. I have McGill taking down Laval. So those are my picks. Danny not here to make her picks, but we're going to continue to preview more university content and uh, recap it next week along with UCI Masters. So that's what we got for the picks for university. Exciting stuff because you got Easterns, and then a few weeks after that, it's University Nationals time. You got the Friday qualifier, which will be exciting. And then you got Saturday, Sunday. So lots of exciting stuff in the university division. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that preview and we'll be right back thanks everyone for tuning in to our uci masters preview in our next episode we are going to be previewing uci senior as well as recapping uci masters so that's going to be girthy and and you're going to be also talking about some college stuff right theo yeah college tournaments happen in steel town eastern ontario qualifier something i think tournaments happen on the west Obviously, less teams than out here in the East, but we'll recap that all for you. We love the fact that we can talk about this stuff. This is like, we we're talking about this off air, Danny and I. This is what we were kind of building up towards, talking about actual tournaments with previewed content. That's how we pitched this podcast idea, and now it's taken fruition. So we're really stoked about that, and we really want to thank you for joining us on the journey. If you don't already, follow us on Instagram. We're going to have more content, especially like, at the tournament because I'll be there not playing. So I'll be like shooting stuff and you maybe, maybe you'll see the video of Danny and I meeting for the first time. That's kind of, uh, I don't know if other people care about it, but obviously we do. So (laughs) we're going to be excited (laughs) to meet each other for the first time in person after talking together for like five plus months online. That's going to be like a whole, it's going to be a whole new world, Danny. I'm just saying. I'm scared. I'm scared. Are you scared? I don't know. Plug those socials, Theo. It's your favorite part. Yeah, hucking at ultiworld.com. People send us email. Do that. Instagram, Facebook. Our Twitter's not as active, but you know, hit us up on Twitter too. And uh, we'll catch you next week for a pretty sweet episode. Good luck to all the teams at UCI Masters. And we'll see you next time. Hi, this is Carla DiFilippo, coach of the Toronto Sixers and co-founder of the Toronto Elites Junior Program. And you're listening to the Huckin' A podcast, your coast-to-coast guide for all things Canadian Ultimate.